Hello, one. It's Brother Ozma Roth once again with another lesson. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kahakodash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father and His Son's name, who the world is going to call Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. I also want to give double honors, uh, double honors to the elders and the apostles of GMS who taught us truth and the real will. I also want to say shalom to all you sincere heart of Akim and Akwa. Let's make your bodies a living sacrifice in this wicked generation. So uh, this morning, I want to touch into uh, through the spirit. It's kind of been on my mind, you know, for the past two or three months. You know, I you know, made some mental notes and eventually, you know, wrote down a couple of precepts that went along with it. And, you know, this morning, you know, as, as I was just meditating upon the times that we're in, you know, how the Lord is about to bring us into, you know, <laughs> this spiritual wilderness, if you will, uh, once again, you know, to basically purge out all of Egypt outside of, out of, out of us, man, you know, even us that's in this truth, you know, we still have uh, little bits and pieces here and there of Babylon in us, but the Lord is about to remove that by putting us through this bitter trial period, right? He's going to put us through the fire to purge all uh, filthiness and all dross off of us, right? And when you consider the times of old, when the Lord redeemed, you know, redeemed us and our foreparents out of the land of Egypt, right? We understand. Let me grab this real quick in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter one, <clears throat> verse, uh, this is spirit, one of four. One generation passes the way. And this is basically, <laughs> this segues ways perfectly into the lesson I want to touch into today, right? How the Lord deals, he's always dealt with a particular generation. He's always dealt with a certain class of Israelites. It's yes, because we're all Israelite. Well, not all of us, but us that's inside of the circle, us that's within this nation. But yet he's always dealt with a certain group. He's always dealt with a certain class or a certain generation, right? He says, one generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Now, let's skip down here to verse 8. So, like it, verse 9. says, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? <laughs> it had been already of old time, which was before us. See that? So scripture is saying that there's nothing new under the sun. There is nothing that has happened of old time that's not happening now and vice versa. Right. So once again, the same spirits, there's no spirit. And this is a total cut on reincarnation. You know, people who don't believe in it or regeneration. Right. Because when you die. Right. Now you're saying that your soul is dead or whatnot. And whenever a newborn baby, so-called newborn baby comes on planet Earth. Right. He has a new spirit. No, <laughs> that's a that's the same old spirit. I was just traveling through the annals of time. Right. And so now, since we understand that there is nothing new under the sun, including the spirits, the same circumstances that we're about to go through, it's nothing new. Right. The same uh, uh, four parents, the, the, the rebellious four parents that was in the wilderness it, it is not new. Right. And also the same. Uh, righteous Israelites, the little ones that scriptures talks about, right? Likens them as the little ones or the children, right? That's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? Or, or the kingdom of Israel are, you know, they're back on the scene today, right? So this is what I want to touch on, you know, today in this lesson. All right, now let me grab this in the book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse five, right? It says, um, uh, there were they in great fear. Let's skip up here to verse uh, four. It says, have all the workers in iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? There were they in great fear. For Yahweh is in the generation of the righteous. See that? Because it, it should be clear now, man, that you have a naughty and rebellious generation within the nation of Israel which is the two thirds. Now, when you go into this word generation, is a uh, Dara, Dara. And it means um, period, generation, um, 
generation, those living on during a period generation characterized by quality. Ooh, I want y'all, <laughs> I get excited, man. I want y'all pay attention to what's in parentheses here. Characterized by quality, condition, class of men. See that? Class of men. So this generation, when scriptures speak about how the Lord is in the generation of the upright, meaning that he's in the generation of the class of men that has quality, that's conditioned a certain type of way, that was literally built a certain type of way, right? And this is, uh, it's all going to tie tie together here once we read uh, Salakia. Give me one second. Give me one second, Salakia. Somebody have a door. Right, I'm back. It's always Satan trying to distract, man. As soon as you get started on the lesson, same thing happened yesterday. <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. Where are we at? Let's go to uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 24. All right? Because as you see, man, and, and what made what inspired me to do this video is that really, you know, this great awakening period that we've been in, you know, for, for, for this little season, you know, according to Ezekiel chapter 37, the dry bones, you know, the nation of Israel rising back up on their feet as a great army. Who do you usually see, you know, on the front lines? Young people, man. <laughs> young people. See, the Lord has always dealt with the young generation. When you consider that parable that Yahweh Shah spoke about, and um, let's find this. Uh, uh, Luke 5 and 37. It says, uh, and he spake also a parable unto them. And what's a parable is a, is a, it's a mysterious saying. It's a dark saying. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. It says if another, and why is he likening a, something new and something old? And we'll continue to read. If otherwise, then both the new make a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And the young generation of our people do not agree with the old. All right, and there's a reason why this is happening because the Lord put this division within the nation of Israel, separating the young and the old. Now, I'm not saying that there's no, no, you know, older people in the truth, but for for majority of the case speaking, it's a lot of uh, it's more younger people, and there's a there's a reason behind this. This is all the plans and intents of Yahweh Bashmah Shah that we're witnessing, all right? And there's nothing new. That's why we're going to get the account uh, in the wilderness says, and no man putteth new wine in old bottles. And we understand that scriptures or this doctrine that the Lord has given us, right, is likened as unto wine and bottles, which are vessels. You read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says that we are vessels, right? Mankind are vessels, particularly the Israelites, right? So putting this doctrine inside of, inside of your body, inside of your spirit, he says, and no man put a new wine in old bottles, meaning old people, man. All right. He says, else the new wine will burst the bottles and will be spilled and the bottle shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles. See that new bottles, the little ones. A little child is new. Right. He says, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. Yeah, because he says, for he saith the old is better. And that's the case for the majority of the older people uh, of the nation of Israel. They don't like the new wine. Why? Because they always say, well, the old way is the better. All right. I've been a Christian for, for 30 years. My grandma has been a Christian for 30 years. Well, these are the things that got us into slavery. Right. Following after the ways of our foreparents. And I'm going to prove that real quick. This is uh, 1 Peter 1 and 18. And I'm going to get in an NLT. 
He says, for you know that Yahweh paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. <laughs> Let's read that again. For you know that Yahweh paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And we inherited a vain, empty life, man, from our ancestors. You know, a, a list just pops up, a laundry list just pops up in my mind. Of course, Christianity, but, you know, getting pushed that you got to go to college, you got to get this particular job, you got to do this, you got to do that to make it into your enemy system, man, that your parents trust in. That's an empty life that you inherited from your ancestors, right? He says, and the ransom he paid was not mere or gold, was not mere gold or silver. See that? And that ransom is uh, the blood of Yahweh Bashem Shah or the blood of Yahweh Shah. Now, let me grab this. I know I'm going kind of fast right now because I really want to get into uh, Numbers, the book of Numbers, right? But this is uh, Second Chronicles 30 and 7. And then, uh, <laughs> and what do our parents, you know, always tell us that they want us to be? I want you to be just like me, son. Or I want you to be just like me, daughter. Well, according to the, according to the Bible, the Lord tells us otherwise, man. He says, and be not ye like your fathers. <laughs> Be not like your fathers, because just think about, you know, what your fathers are like. You know, those of you that's in this troop, you know, I'm pretty sure I can say with confidence that at least 90 to 95 percent of us, our dads are not in the truth. Our, our mothers are not in the truth. Well, this is why the Lord tells us don't be like them. man. He says, and not like your brethren. Yeah, because you also got brothers and sisters <laughs> that's of your same family. But guess what? They don't they don't have anything to do with you. How about your shot? Right, just like our forefather Abraham, his father was an idol maker in Babylon. And the Lord called Abraham out of his father's house, man. Same thing that he's do doing to us. We coming in the stead in the legacy. We're fulfilling the trying to fulfill the footprints that our forefather Abraham left for us, man. Leave your family behind. Don't be like your dads. Don't be like your brother. Don't be like your sister. Because the Lord ain't dealing with them. Those are old bottles and they cannot contain this new wine. All right, he says, and be not like your forefathers and like your brethren which trespassed against Yahweh, the power of their father. See that? Because he's still the God of them, but they trespassed against him. He says, who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. And it, we see how the Lord has given our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our aunties, our uncles up to desolation. They bugged out their minds. They're getting dragon juice all up in them. <laughs> they about to get the karagma. They stockpiling, you know, on these particular items and don't even know that the Lord about to kill them. Right? He says, verse 8, Now be ye not stiff-necked, meaning hard-headed, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto Yahweh and enter into his sanctuary. And this truth is the sanctuary. This is our refuge. And who do you predominantly see doing this? This young generation, man, right? This is why Paul tells, tells you in, a, what was that? Uh, first, first Timothy chapter four, I believe. He says, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example unto believers, right? <laughs> and these people are really trying to despise the youth, man. Man, yeah, you know, and I see it all the time when we're holding count. You know, these, these old niggas, because that's exactly what they are, old niggas. Man, you can't tell me nothing about the Bible, man. I'm in church. You know? <laughs> but these are the very ones that the Lord is dealing with. Right? When you consider our Lord, Yahweh Shah, he started his ministry at 12 years old, man. Confounding old law keepers, confounding old uh, 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 Pharisees and scribes. 12 years old, man. They were amazed at his wisdom. And they envied him, man. <laughs> so much to the point to where they eventually killed him. All right? Now, be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto Yahweh and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve Yahweh your power, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. See that? <laughs> because by the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. All right? Now, let me grab this. In the book of Psalms 24, verse 6, 
says, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah, right? So this is the generation, right? See, the Lord was, the reason why, you know, during a time of slavery, hardcore slavery, because we're still in slavery, but hardcore slavery, you know, the Lord was not dealing with us because that particular generation was not on the scene in, in its fruition, in its totality like it is today. All right, because the Lord brought all those spirits back and gathered them for right now, for this particular time that we're living in. This is why Earth is at its fullest population, is more populated than it's ever been. Why? Because the Lord brought all these spirits back to receive their proper judgment, whether unto death or whether unto life. Right, but scripture, and this is a prophecy that we're reading right here in Psalms. This is the generation that seeketh him. See, the Lord was waiting for us to wake up. All right <laughs> now, let me see what this word generation goes into this one. I believe it's the same one. Yeah, uh, class of men, quality. Yeah, this is a particular spirit that possess that quality or that class that Yahweh has been looking for, man. <laughs> that he is deemed worthy to receive that salvation. These are the spirits that's been with him from the beginning, right? Because the elect, the first fruits, which we're going to go into it were uh with Yahweh why Yahweh well, with Yahweh Shah from the very beginning right because in the spirit yeah you may be the youngest in your family but if you're the if you're the elect you're actually technically the oldest like your parents you know are actually your children right because <laughs> and I, I ain't trying to get too deep with it but you know let's say for instance you know your parents may have been you know the two-thirds or whatnot and you were the elect well in the kingdom you know, when you have children, when you multiply, which since we understand the process of re regeneration, your parents are going to come through your loins. Everything was in that particular, in the exact order that it was supposed to be from the very beginning. <laughs> it's about some of us possess more wisdom than our parents, man. All right, because we're actually their parents. So nonetheless, let me get this in um, John 15 and 27. And it says... And you also shall bear witness, right? Because you have been with me from the beginning. See, there are certain spirits that was with Yahweh Shah and the angels from the very beginning of times that the Lord communed with, you know, he created them to, to love him, right? To possess that quality or that class that, he's, that he desires, right? And you also have that generation, you know, of spirits, of Israelites, that are that are lesser of stature right and this is this is a cut on christianity as well because they believe that we're all the same even within the nation of israel you, we're not all the same you have greater and you have lesser than in the nation of israel yes we're all a holy people we're all a great people man that the lord loves but even within that the lord has set up rank and order right now let me prove that real quick this is a uh, revelation 14 Make sure I got enough time. This damn job requires so much of me, man. I'm ready to give it up. <laughs> man, you should be tired of working now, man. Seeing everything that's going on. You should be tired of working. This is the only thing that you should want to do, man. Is serve Yahweh Bashamah Shah with reverence and fear. Because it's the only thing that matters. Like <laughs> that scripture that I read a couple of lessons ago from 2nd Ezra chapter 16 says anything that will be done in these days is in vain, man. And I feel that. You know. Only thing that's not in vain is building up the tabernacles of David, man, and edifying your people. But nonetheless, this is uh, Revelation 14, verse 4. He says, These are they which are not defiled with women. And this woman is speaking about when you read Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 2, speaks about uh, how women is known as philosophies, right? America is known as a woman, where she pushed forth her philosophies and ideologies, spiritual adultery. It says, but these are they which are not defiled with women, speaking of the 144,000 that will not be persuaded or uh, know any other type of philosophy or ideology after they come into the knowledge of truth. He says, for they are virgins, meaning they're pure. These are they which follow the lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the lamb. So the elect, the 144,000 men, were they're known as the first fruits now when we go into this word first fruits let 
Strong's G, 536. Apar hey. Apar right? And it says uh, to offer firstlings or first fruits, to take away the first fruits of the productions of the earth, which is offered to Yahweh. Uh, let me skip down here. It says persons, check this out. Person superior in uh, a person superior in excellence to others of the same class. Person superior in excellence to others of the same class. So yeah, you're Israelite, right? But guess what? If you're not of the 144,000, you're not superior, right? Like the 144,000 is. That particular generation of spirits, that class of men, the class of spirits, the quality, right? And it's all by design from Yahweh Bashmah Shah. You can't make yourself of a particular quality. The Lord had to have made you that, man, because it pleased him to make certain spirits, to form certain spirits that just <laughs> innately love him like that, man. And this is that generation, the generation of the little ones that scriptures speak about that rejoice in his highness. Now, let me get that in uh, 2 Ezra chapter 1. And then we're going to skim through numbers. 2 <clears throat> Ezra 1 and 37. And it says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones, see that, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. Yeah, and those little ones is the elect, man. Right? <laughs> the lowly, the despised. Right? When you consider David, David was actually the youngest, you know, of his, of his family. Right? In the flesh, he wasn't the first fruit. He wasn't the firstborn son. But in the spirit, we all know David was an elect man. <laughs> 144,000. It's so much to the point to where there's an uh, actual throne waiting for David to rule on in the kingdom. So obviously he was the first fruit in the spirit. And those are the little ones because David was the smallest one. He was the, 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 the youngest one in his family. See that? <laughs> and these are the ones that the Lord <clears throat> has, uh, has prepared, you know, who's brought back upon planet Earth to receive the kingdom, right? Now, let me segue into, uh, into numbers. As a matter of fact, before I get that, let me get Psalm 78, verse five, right? Just lamb backing off of the, the fact that the Lord does not want us to be like our foreparents. He don't want you to be like your dad if he's not in the truth. He don't want you to be like your mama, your brother, your sister, right? The Lord has called us into a noble and a high degree we're aristocrats, man. They ain't talking about nothing. They're still considered Gentiles. Yeah, we love them. <laughs> but at the same time, we're not, we not in that same frame of thought, man. The Lord has called us into something higher. This is Psalm 78, verse 5. It says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. And our fathers don't make the law such commandments known to us. <laughs> this was a miracle that the Lord brought it to our remembrance. It says that the generation to come, to that that the generation, and this is what we're speaking about, harping upon in this lesson, a particular generation, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. So this is supposed to be an oral tradition. He's supposed to tell your children about the miraculous works that the Lord has worked for your ancestors, man, for you and your ancestors. And it's supposed to be a continual thing, how the Lord brought us out of Egypt, how he worked all these marvelous things so we can, so we would never forget. So that particular generation can tell their children, verse 7, that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments. Check this out, verse 8, and might not be as their fathers. <laughs> so the Lord wanted us to remember his work so we don't be like his fathers. All right, because our parents totally discontinued from their heritage. They forgot about they were Israelites. They forgot about, you know, who their power is. They looking at a damn white Jesus, man. Why? Because they did not remember. They did not remember, he says, and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation. So these are two different types of generations we're dealing with. 
a rebellious generation and a generation that followeth him. It says a generation that set not their heart, meaning their mind, aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. See that? Now, let me grab this in a book of Numbers. What is that? 14. And let's see. This job. Wait. Yeah, this is Numbers chapter 14. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. And we'll just kind of get some of the highlights out of it. Um, really, I encourage all of you that's listening to read Numbers 13 and Numbers 14 and get the full gist of it, you know, and Lord willing, make more sense after you listen to this uh, video, you know, but nonetheless. So basically, give you a brief synopsis. In, in chapter 13, the Lord chose Joshua and Caleb to go search out the promised land. But the promised land was currently inhabited at that time by, um, by I want to say, what was it, the, um, the, uh, the Anax, Anax and uh, Amalekites and Canaanites, right? And those were, you know, those were mighty people. Like the scripture says that they were giants, man. You know, they were men of tall stature. You know, they had a great army. Right. And there were some Israelites that went to go spy out that land, but they brought back an evil report saying, man, we don't think we can take it. These people are too strong for us. There's no way we can tear them up, man. There's no way we could win in battle. But yet you had Joshua and Caleb. They came back with that right report. They're like, yeah, they, they, they strong, but that land looks good over there. And as long as we do what our power tells us to do, he's going to allow us to inherit it. Now, see, in the spirit, the same thing is going on right now. You got a rebellion, you got a, a, a generation of people, right? <laughs> they don't believe that this man, Esau, Edom, can be moved out the way. They believe that he's the end all be all. There's no way we can defeat him. So you just submit to him, right? But on the other hand, you got a group of people, a small, that, that class of men, that <laughs> those first fruit spirits, that righteous generation that, that's coming back with that report, that good report. Right. And they're saying, you know what? Babylon is taken. It's finished. This place is moved out the way. The kingdom is up next, man. As long as we continue to do what our power do, uh, tells us to do, we're going to get the kingdom, man. Right. But yet, as we read in the story, you had some of our well, a, a large majority of our people, you know, particularly that older generation. The Lord just killed them off in the wilderness because of their unbelief, knowing what and actually seeing what the Lord just did. For them in the land of Egypt. Right? He took down that whole empire and paved the way for them through the Red Sea. But yeah, they don't believe that he can do this. All right. So let's just uh let's just dive into it real quick. This is uh Numbers 14, verse 1. And it says, and look at the title, it says the people rebel. And when you go into that word rebel, re means back again, and bell is belly on, which means war. <laughs> means back at war, man. And that's our people, man. They continue to fight and fight against the Most High. But their arms are not long enough to box with the Most High. The Lord keeps knocking our people on the ass, man. All right? But nonetheless, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. And he says, uh, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation and said unto them, would God that we died in the land of Egypt, or would God we died in his wooden? So they're saying, Lord, after they heard the report of how these people were in this land and they're just too strong and mighty for them, they're like, Lord, why couldn't we just die in Egypt, meaning die in captivity or slavery? Is that not what our people are saying right now? We'd much rather just die here in America, man, instead of follow the Lord and do what he says, man. Says... <laughs> And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And our people always want to go back to Egypt, man. All right? It says, and they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. So they're now they're having a council amongst themselves that let's, let's appoint a leader. Right, that's going to lead us back into Egypt because this ain't the way, man. The Lord brought us out here in the wilderness to kill us, man. All right, and that's what our people do when they when they vote, you know, and advocate for these damn puppets like Jesse Jackass and Reverend Al Sharpton. These people are not trying to get you out of this place. These are these are so called captains that our people have set up to basically help forward you in Egypt, man. 
to keep you in this docile state in Egypt. Now, and, and this proven, man, that there's nothing new under the sun. This is how you know that who the Israelites are. So-called white man ain't doing this. Chinese man ain't doing that. It's, it's only our people, man. So-called black, Spanish, and Native Americans that love this place. They don't believe that Babylon is falling. But yeah, you got Edomites that actually tell you that, that this place is finished. And this is their kingdom. Right? Verse, uh, verse 5. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of uh, Jeph Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. And that's what, in the spirit, the two witnesses in Revelation that you read in Revelation 11, which is the northern kingdom and southern kingdom, right, of our people that have come back to the realization that we're Israelites, keeping lost touch commandments and having faith in Yahweh Shah, symbolize the two witnesses, Joshua and Caleb. And we're telling you all the same thing. The promised land, the kingdom is a good land. Read Isaiah 61. Read Isaiah 14. Read Isaiah chapter 60. Look at all these beautiful promises that the Lord has promised unto us. Isaiah chapter 45. All right. Isaiah 48. Man, the list continues. Just read through the prophecies and we can see in prophecy how good this land is about to be. All right. But yet you had certain you know, of our people who didn't believe that report. Verse seven, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, see that? If if the Lord delight in us, and how does the Lord delight in us? If we do what he says, man, <laughs> it's not rocket science, All right? He says, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not. <laughs> so they're saying, just don't rebel not. I mean, so like you only rebel not ye against Yahweh. Neither fear the people of the land. And our people fear the people of the land. They fear Esau. This is why they submit to anything that he says. He says, put a mask on, you put a damn mask on. The Lord tells you to keep the Sabbath, you don't do it. Right? I'm going to show you who you fear says neither fear the people of the land for they are bread for us so joshua and caleb are saying listen we can eat these people up man as long as we do what the lord says he says their defense is departed from them and esau's defense <laughs> is departed from him and what's esau's what's what's been his defense man let's grab this in isaiah 47 and verse 12 and this this chapter is speaking about the daughter of babylon which is america he says stand now with thine enchantments so this has been America's uh, uh, defense, is enchantments and spiritual wickedness. And says, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, if so, be thou, thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now your, astrolo your astrologers or the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prodigators, stand up and save you from these things that shall come upon thee. And America's enchantments, sorceries, uh, astrology, all these witchcrafts that America, you know, has been standing upon, you know, and been uh, sustained by, you know, for all these years has finally fled her. This is why the elites are moving in such a sloppy, unorganized way right now. They're just about to say, F it, we're about to use the sword, right? So just like Joshua and Caleb said, <laughs> Their defense has gone away from them. This is what we're telling you, man. It says, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Verse 10 is the key point. But all the congregation, right, <laughs> bade stone them with stone. So our people want to kill the prophets. They want to kill, you know, the people who had good, the Joshua and Caleb, the men who had good report. All right, our people don't want to believe that, <laughs> America, you know, there's something past America. It says, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And Yahweh said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? <laughs> right? Because when you rebel against the Lord, when you don't believe in his promises, 
you provoke him, man. And when the Lord gets provoked, some blood got to be shed, man. Says, and how long will it be uh, ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? So the Lord is saying, how long will they not believe me despite all the signs I showed amongst them? It says, I will smite them with the pestilence. And our people's getting smitten with the pestilence right now. You know, C-19 is just one of them. But the Lord got some stuff in his armory that he's never even pulled out before, man. That he's about to just <laughs> engage upon the unbelieving of our people, that, that wicked generation. It says, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. Meaning he's going to unown you, man. <laughs> You're not his no more. All right. At least in this lifetime. It says, and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, uh, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou brought us up this people uh, in thy might from among them. So basically Moses is calling the Lord, you know, because the Lord is speaking out of his wrath, out of his, you know, jealousy. You know, so Moses is trying to assuage the anger of the Lord, say, listen, Lord, well, if you do this, if you kill all these people, then the Egyptians basically just going to say that, you know, you brought these people out of the land of Egypt and you couldn't save them. You couldn't bring them to the promised land. Right. So, uh, so verse 18, Yahweh is long suffering. Let me skip down here for y'all. Yahweh is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniqu iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Verse 19 is what Moses says. He says, Pardon, I beseech thee, meaning forgive these people, please the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to thy word. So the Lord pardoned, you know, particular Israelites, according to Moses' word, Moses stand, standing as a mediator for Israel, just like Yahweh Shah is that great mediator for us. Yahweh Shah assuages the wrath, you know, uh, um, you know, from, from the, from the hopefully let 21, the Lord says, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracle. So, you know, you have seen what the Lord has done, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. All right? Now check this out. <laughs> but my servant Caleb, and what does Caleb's name mean? Go into it. I know it's a lot of reading, but you got to understand this uh the story, man, because we're in the we're in the same, we're we're in the spiritual wilderness again. All right. Caleb is uh Kalab in the Hebrew, and it means dog. It means dog. Now, why does his name mean dogs? Because what are dogs known for being? Very faithful unto their owner. They follow the owner wherever he goes. They're always on his skirt, uh, skirt tail, right? And he's going to prove it, right, when you continue to read. But my servant, let me get the screen again. What they say, dog is man's best friend. <laughs> All right, and that's the elect. You know, the elect is Yahweh Bashamah Shah's favorite friend, his best friend. Because they love him, man. No matter what. Even, even when the owner whoops his ass, that dog will still come back to him. As a matter of fact, Job said the same thing. This is Job 13 and 15. It says, though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust in him. See that? And what do you have to do with the animal, with the dog? You got to beat the, you know beat the um beat their self-willed nature out of them until they can please you all right get that beastly nature out of, out of them and that's what the lord's been doing it to the elect man until the dogs for you how about your mouth shot you know and they say men, all men are dogs well the elect yeah we in the spirit on the right hand side we are dogs man because we faithful to our lord though he slay us we still gonna trust him though he whoop our ass man all right <laughs> he's all we got who else gonna feed us says but i will maintain my own ways before him yeah, let's go back to numbers 24 he says but my servant caleb see that and what's a servant someone who serves you hand and foot you do whatever that they want you to do just like a dog man 
You tell your dog, go get this. You know, you train your dog to, you know, go get this or go get that. He's going to serve. He says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. See that? So Caleb had another spirit. He possessed a different type of spirit inside of him that other Israelites just did not have. And that goes to show you that obviously Caleb <laughs> is the elect that we read about, man. He's, he's the elect. Uh, uh, Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which were not the foul women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh. Now, what does he say about Caleb? But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit and had followed me fully. That's what we just read in Revelation 14. They followed the lamb wherever he goeth, man. All right. And once again, you get into that word. We're going to get it one more time. First fruits. Aparte, and it means person superior in excellence to others of the same class. Joshua had a different spirit within inside of him. I mean, Caleb had another spirit inside of him. He had a, a more excellent and superior in quality of spirit. It says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whatsoever we're into he went. And his seed. See that his seed shall possess it, the elect seed, right? When we get into the kingdom, we're going to have seed, right? <laughs> we're going to have more elect men and women and children, man. He says, now the uh, uh, Malachites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the sea. Uh, and I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to stop at verse uh, 33, though. It says, Y'all read it on your free time. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. And what, what are they speaking in the Most High's ears? They spoke death. They said, <laughs> He's just going to kill us. So the Lord said, Okay, I'll do it unto you. You expecting death, so I'm gonna give you death, right? As a matter of fact, let me get that in uh, Proverbs, All right? Because the elect, man, we hope for life. Everybody speaks about death right now, but the elect is just speaking life. Like, <laughs> yeah, we we know a thousand gonna follow our right hand, ten thousand our left hand, or vice versa. But the Lord's still gonna see us through. We truly believe that we're gonna be alive, man. See, it takes somebody of a different spirit to have that report, right? In the midst of the talk of famine, in the midst of the talk of shortages and supplies, in the midst of FEMA camps, right? Who's speaking life? Who's saying that we truly believe that the Lord is going to preserve us? Yes, we're going to catch some hell, but he's going to see us through. It's that particular generation of spirits that's back today, man. <laughs> and it's all making sense. Psalms 112 verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. See that? The generation, meaning the class of men, that particular group, the first fruits of the spirits of the upright shall be blessed. And this is, um, and here's another scripture. I want to say Psalms 118, maybe. Get this. Yep, Psalms 118, verse 17. This is what David says, an elect man of God. He says, I shall not die, <laughs> but live and declare the works of Yahweh. So in the midst of everyone speaking about death, hey, man, you know you don't take that thing, you're going to die. No, man, we're going. We not going to die. We're going to live. Now, we understand it's already written that some of us will have to see death, but the Lord, even in that, the Lord has the keys of death and hell, man. He says, I'm the resurrection. So, the Lord can easily, he's, he, he's, he already promised that he's going to rise, he's going to raise up the first fruits, man. Those that died in him, they're going to be the first ones in the chariots, man. They're going to be brought back to life. So either way, if you a part, if you, if you a part of this, this class of the generation of the upright, the elect, you can't not lose, man. <laughs> you cannot lose. Like Paul said in Romans chapter 8, 
neither death nor life can separate us from the love of Yahweh Shah, man. It don't matter if you die or if you're living. He's had, he has not forgotten about you, man. Because who? what did he say in Zechariah? I want to say, what is that? Zechariah 12, maybe? Zechariah 12 and 1. The burden of the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith Yahweh, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Yes, the Lord that made your spirit, man. He made your body as well as your spirit. And he does not forget <laughs> not one spirit. So we got to remember that, man. Now, let me go back to uh, Numbers. Yeah, this is the book of Numbers, chapter uh, 14, verse 28. And he says, <laughs> and this is what he's speaking about our foreparents, man. He says, say unto them, as truly as I live, save Yahweh, as you have spoken to my ears, so will I do to you. And I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you, according to your number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. So if you're 20 years old and upward, the Lord had an arrow on your target, man. He had a, a, he had a target on your back, right? He says, doubtless, you shall not come into the land. So yeah, no doubt, you will not come into this land, I promise. Concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Why? Because they had a different, Caleb had a different spirit inside of him. Verse 31, but your what? Little ones. Your little ones, which you said should be a prey, then will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. And our parents, hey, really, if you think about it, they say that we're 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 those little ones that's gonna be a prey. Man, I'm glad I won't be around with you know when you you know 55 a.m. telling what the world gonna be, man. Y'all y'all just a lost cause. Yeah, the little ones that you said is gonna be a prey, the Lord's gonna bring us to that land, man. Right. And the little ones is the elect. That's why Yahweh Shah says this in Matthew chapter 18, <clears throat> verse two. I'm sorry, verse one. And at the same time came the disciples unto Yahweh Shah, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh Shah called a little child unto him. Like it. Yahweh Shah called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted. And become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as his little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And this is why, this is what makes you either old or young, a child or adult, right? <laughs> is the level of your humility. And when you look at the large majority of the old people, this Israelites, man, they are prideful as hell, right? Just yesterday, I had somebody in my Bible group chat talking about how they were trying to, you know, just tell their grandma about this thing. And grandma flipped shit, man. See, this is why for the majority of the part, this is not for old people. The Lord did not design this for old people. You cannot put new wine into old bottle bottles. For the old bottles, they're going to say, we've always only old, we've only known the old, and it's always been good to us. All right, that's why he tells us, be not like our foreparents. So hopefully this is making sense to you. So Numbers 14, 31, but your little ones, which you said should be a prey, then will I bring it into the land and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, <laughs> your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Yeah, so your grandparents, your great grandparents, your, your mom, they're going to die right here in America, man. Just like they did back then. They're going to die because they unbelief and they hard hearts, man says, and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. What does that mean? Basically meaning <laughs> because of your sins, we got to we got to be punished for. It. Right. See, this is why we're suffering those generational curses because the hard headedness of our foreparents, which we are foreparents. Right. But let me grab this in Lamentations five and seven says, our fathers have sinned and are not, basically meaning they're dead now. So our fathers sinned and they're dead, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us. Yeah, these people that's over us right now, they're actually servants, but they're ruling over us. Why? Because our fathers sinned and they're dead. So now we got to bear their shame. 
There is none that deliver us out of their hand. See that? So, but after we bear the reproach and the sins of our foreparents and we take it cheerfully, right? That's when the Lord is going to see us through, man. Says, and your, let me go back to Numbers 14.33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted. See that? In the wilderness. So, yeah, man. That's pretty much all I want to grab into, man. As a matter of fact, let me get that in. Uh, uh, P, uh, Timothy. It's 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Don't let anybody despise your youth, man. All right? But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. All right. Because this should make you feel good, man. Knowing that, <laughs> you know, that the Lord chose you young. Right? And he's not doing anything new. As we just read, he's always been doing this, man. Always choosing the young. Right? Because the young is actually the first fruits in the spirit. We're actually the oldest. Right? You know, not trying to make it about me, but ever since I was a young, young man, you know, young, even a little kid, People always said, man, you got a spirit of an old man inside of you. You know, Lord willing, I'll, you know, one of those first fruits that's always been around. You know, so this is Psalms 119 verse 100. This is what David says. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Yeah, so we understand more than our parents do, more than our grandparents do. Why? Because we keep his precepts. <laughs> All right. So, so with that, man, I hope you was edified, you know, while we're in this wilderness, continue to keep that spirit. Fight to keep that zeal and that fire like Caleb and Joshua did, man. You know, and just let your parents be, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> the Lord going to sort that out. All right. But nonetheless, hope that was edifying. DTA, a baba baba. Until next time, shalom.